Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mama Vic channel. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I've been silent because I've been actually figuring out how to run my own validator node. Now, today I want to talk about some of the ups and downs that I face, but I also want to give you a little bit more details about how to navigate this space. If you're a, vali if you're a validator, if you're a delegator, or if you want to start out in this space, I think you'll find this video extremely useful, so make sure you watch the whole thing. And welcome to my channel. First of all guys, the first thing I want to do is to, to send a shout out to CrossNet. This is one of the validators as you can find. They have a website actually, which is one of the metrics you want to look at if you're looking for a quality validators. But we're going to also understand that finding validators or if you're a delegator, you want to delegate your tokens to a particular validator, you have to know that you have to look at the time they started. You have to look at if they have a website, if they have a profile, but you also have to understand that some of the, this is new technology, this is nascent technologies and and some of these people, some of these companies are just starting out. So you have to also, it's, it can also be subjective as opposed to objective. You, you have to do your research to find out quality validators that are new. For example, I think CrossNet has been around for a while, but maybe a year or a little a little less than that or a little over that but they seem like very quality team because they helped me out to figure out a couple of things as i was trying to as, as i was uh, finding some pitfalls as i was trying to you know spin up my own validator node someone from their team actually reached out and helped me and i don't think i would have you know done this by myself if it wasn't for them so first of all i'm going to mention a few tips out there so that you don't have to face the the pitfalls that i faced trying to spin up my own validator node but first i want to give a shout out to them this is their website join join the nest our institutional grade blockchain infrastructure i can actually second this because the person that helped me was really really good though of course i had to put in extreme i had to be devoted to what i'm doing so you can see their networks uh, if you go through the website you can see that they run validators for a couple of networks like crypto.org Terra2, Axilla, Cosmos Hub, Osmosis Zone, Inject Injective Protocol, Juno, Fetch.ai itself, which I was, I was actually running a validator for, Kujira Network. And this is quite interesting because they have a lot of experience in this space. But because most of these nodes are on the Cosmos Network, is actually what you learn with a particular network. You can actually bootstrap that and use for other networks. So this is their team. You can look at their team. So I'm just giving a shout out because I'm extremely thankful for them reaching out where no one else did which was which was quite interesting but I'm, I'm really really thankful so first of all i spun up my validator node using the fetch.ai network which means you can actually come to their documents page and look at their documents page but even if you're running a network or a validator node for another network on the cosmos ecosystem this it's, it's pretty much the same thing because there's, there's this thing they use uh called for example I think in Cosmos it's called Gaiad. Let me try and type it here. It's something like Gaiad. So for fetched, it will be like fetched. Other networks, maybe they'll just add whatever word they're using with a D at the end. So let's just say deed with a D at the end. So it's stuff like that. You can bootstrap the same stuff to actually navigate this space. So the documents page on the first ODI network is extremely, extremely helpful. And if you follow it to the bone, you can actually spin up your own validator node. It's just that I faced a couple of errors here and there and of course because i was new to this space there was a lot to learn you have to face problems to to bootstrap those troubleshoot those problems to learn the things that you do not know that's part of the learning process so if you're really good at command line interface in ubuntu and linux this should be a it should it will be very easy to follow up on this it's just copy paste these commands and so of course you can follow the the documents how to set up your keys you can when you set up a validator node you can spin up the keys that are going to allow you to you know have these tokens and spin up your validator node now you can also set up these keys using your ledger nano and this takes me back into this point that i want that i started up with here bare metal infrastructure versus cloud services now i'm running my node on bare metal infrastructure in other words i went out there and bought my own server and installed the linux system on the server and actually did this so one advantage i found is that i can actually use my ledger nano keys on my server now if you know how to navigate if you're a genius at this command line interface stuff i'm sure you can do the same with a cloud service i didn't use that so i'm not too sure maybe you can find a way to navigate a program that can communicate with a server but on my case i had to physically interact with my server to put in this key otherwise there was no other way to 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 generate these keys without having my usb 
in the actual physical server but maybe if you're really good at this at command line interface you might find another way to do it so that's one so these are some of the things that I didn't have to navigate that problem because I had the bare metal infrastructure. The other thing is setting up some of the security primitives like how to protect your keys with the PGP encryption, stuff like that. So, well, just Google PGP encryption and you find out what it is. There's this amazing documentation that will help you find out how to encrypt your keys. And that will also help you learn how to encrypt files. So you'll be able to encrypt your emails. It's really easy. If you spin up, it's called PGP. I'll just type it here. PGP encryption now this is some of the stuff that i learned from the guys that helped me at crossnet the guy just told me set up a pgp encryption i'm like oh my god what's that but instead of bugging him with questions i decided to go out there and do it myself and i learned a lot so you learn a lot about tokens about how to generate multi-signature keys this is all copy paste documentation it's a pro it's it's a handheld guide pretty much guys you can do it then a delegator guide if you're a delegator and you have your command line interface and you've installed the fetched service so you can query you can use you can invoke the first service query a staking staking validators you type in their address but if you don't want to do all this, I'm going to show you some of the platforms you can just use to, to, to see all of this, to see what validators are there in case you don't want to do this yourself. And if you're a validator, you can join a testnet. I recommend joining a testnet. What I did is I went live into the actual deployment of this stuff. So, but I advise to actually use a testnet first because you can navigate and see what problems you're facing before you launch your actual node out there. You can look at Block Explorers, Fetch Story has its own Block Explo Explorer, but it, 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 I'm going to show you others you can use as well. You know, you don't have to just focus on all of this. They can't build everything, but they have their own that you can use. So you can find out all of these in the documents. They have a token for set in case you're running a testnet. You can get these tokens that you can use to run your validator node. And at the end of it all, I can assure you, you would have set up your own validator node. So this little summary here, guys, that I wrote here, some of the ups and downs, I summarized it. That's it. That's pretty much it. I've talked about the bare metal infrastructure. It was better for me because I had to sometimes I had to interact with the actual server. So maybe there's a way to 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 do this with uh, if you're using cloud services to set up your own uh, with the ledger nano. If you're using cloud services, uh, I guess there's a way to do it but <clears throat> it was possible for me to interact with the physical server so some of the ups and downs if you successfully set this up and you get a lot of people to delegate to your node eventually maybe millions of tokens are delegated to your node of course it can be extremely profitable but in the beginning there's some it, it requires a lot of maintenance but you know it can be i guess it can be extremely profitable but some of the downfalls are what if you're running this node for a network that's not going to be successful in the future so that takes me back to the point of we're nascent stages and of course this is all experimental stuff and the most amazing thing is the learning experience that you draw from all of these guys. So some of the downs, it's a full-time job. It's a full-time job because you have to figure out how to run all these things. You have to figure out the maintenance. You have to go through the phases of should I give up? Should I keep going? Should I give up? Should I keep going? And I guess I have to tell you but I have to tell you that you always have to keep going because if you give up then you, you're just giving up because you, you just stay in that state of not knowing what you don't know uh, just keep moving just keep moving forward and you figure it out uh, unlike delegation we just sit back and watch the tokens uh, roll in these uh, an initial expense especially if you're going to run your own bare metal bare metal infrastructure but you know I mean you have to hope that these networks are worth it in the future and just remember you're securing a, a, a network a global network you're helping these networks heartbeat tick every single day by securing and by running your own validator node you're actually improving the security of this network the attack vector on this network is exponentially increased or reduced well it, it becomes that much harder to attack the network because you've added some extra infrastructure onto the network so there's a lot of advantages that some are selfish, some are selfless, but it's all for the betterment of the whole ecosystem. And of course, the last thing I want to note is obviously know how to navigate the command line interface on Linux, especially because this is open source free software. You can just spin it up and run it. So you have to you have to know the basics of running the of, of using the command line interface of linux in order to to do this which is not very hard to do guys it's not very hard to do these there's a lot of hand holding 
uh, videos on the internet that will help you do this. There's one that I have not included here, but if you actually have your own server, there's a if you search YouTube, there's a video out there that will handhold you through the whole process of setting up an Ubuntu system onto your Linux server, including the networks and all that. And then one really helpful video I found is right here, which is under the Cosmos, um, the Cosmos YouTube channel itself, Cosmos, which is named Cosmos Code With Us, setting up a Cosmos Validator node. Now this will help you learn a few bootstrapping things like how to set up your address so that your node doesn't, doesn't ping your address to the public network to prevent things like DDoS attacks and also just the process of setting up this. Now it's a Cosmos video, but just just use the same thing and you'll be able to follow up to set up your fetch node as well because it it all it all uses tender mint and it will use the same sort of it communication to do what it does because it's all communicating with tender mint with a lot of with the latest cosmos updates and it's navigating that same consensus algorithm so these things will not differ that much that knowledge you'll get will actually be helpful in navigating these other things now, one other hint I want to give you, if you're learning this, learn how to use some of the commands like system CTL. In these, for example, these very short documents that will teach you what this does, it's just a few commands to learn what it does. But these few commands here will really help you navigate to, to, to look at your node and what it's up to. Is it active? Is it this? You can do that without it, but it also helps you to spin up your node. Maybe when your server shuts down, when you put it, when you turn it back on, your node will automatically start. So stuff like that. System CTL is a very helpful tool for that. Then there's another one which is journal CTL. This one will help you see the logs of your node in case there's an error. You can see what the errors are, where they're coming from, so you can troubleshoot your node. You know, bootstrap these systems. Use these two of course, if you're a professional at Linux uh, com uh, using the command line interface on Ubuntu and Linux and other sort of other distributions, then you already know how to do this. But if you're a new person, just these little commands will really help you navigate that space and set up your node. Now, let's get into the graphical user interface that everyone knows. For example, Mintscan is, is a technology built from the Cosmos side, I think by the Cosmos team themselves. This is a very helpful tool. Most of you know what it is. You can look at the dashboard. You can, uh, for example, if you've chosen Fetch Network, you can choose a whole array of networks. Choose what you're interested in. Choose what you're doing. What you want. If you're a delegator, what you want to view. If you're a validator, what you want to still view. Maybe you want to view your own node or other validators or uh, the what's going on in the space. This is an amazing tool. You can view the dashboard, which, give you, which even gives you some details about the price of the token, the market capitalization, the 24-hour volume, the block height, the transactions on the network, the bonded tokens. You can see 316.49 million tokens out of the 1.1 billion tokens out there of Fetch that have been bonded, which is pretty amazing. That's a lot. And we know that Fetch.ai tries to constantly push for decentralization, which is an amazing thing. Then you can also click on the validators and here straight away they arrange this in, in a hierarchical you know pattern of the highest delegated tokens so naturally the strongest uh, validator would be the one with the most tokens because they have they have the uh, most um, what do we call it voting power on the network and that's what makes them successful or rather in that sense because they have a lot of power uh, and it, of, of course they have to make sure they vote on proposals for example you can see this has voted seven out of seven but at the same time it goes back to that subjective thing about validators if it's a new validator then of course they haven't had the chance to vote on some of the new proposals so you have to look at things like that as you're you know choosing your validator but i also want to give you the met i want to still tell you that you have to look at when this validator node has been active how long it has been active or if, it, if it's a new validator and you're interested in them then you have to view their node and make sure it's uh, they're trying hard to make sure it's 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 active or if they get jailed or if something happens to their node are they actually recompensating the people that are validate that are uh, delegating their tokens to them because their tokens are slashed so it's good to actually reimburse some of those some of those slashed um slash rewards uh, from your delegators you have to you want to reimburse them so that they don't actually lose out so it, 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 some of the practices you have to look out if you're choosing uh, delegators are they doing this now of course I would shield my validator node it's actually right here but it's up to you to actually do your research um, on on which validators or that you're interested in delegating to especially if you're delegating and this is a nice space to see first I just increased the number of validators you can see 70 over here 
and you can see a couple of metrics the number of tokens a validator has of course translates to their voting power you can look at the cumulative share of the network with uh, this the first guy having 13 percent of the network they participated seven out of seven they voted on the proposals 100 percent uptime uh, uptime is pretty much how you know your node is up is it up is it running is it constantly um uh, uh looking signing blocks and things like that but mostly is the node active does it have that uptime is it on that is the uptime and the commission of course don't let don't be confused by the commission the commission is what the validator actually takes is not what you get so the validator says hey of the 43 million tokens that are delegated to me i'll be taking if i i'm the network gives me back five percent of those tokens so that's how you look at that commission then of course you can also look at the proposal the proposals in a particular network for example if you've chosen fetch.ai on mintscan and if you choose proposals you see some of the proposals for example increase the maximum number of validators to 70 uh fip or fetch improvement proposal i think that's why it is 004 set transaction fees on mainnet to two uh a fet which is the same as fet and other proposals you can view that then there are other platforms that also give you more analytics about this space. For example, I saw these guys tweet something about Fetch.ai. They implemented it on their platform. And that's the only reason really why I picked them. But they're also part of the validators. The reason why I showed this is to just show you some of these other analytics tools that are out there. For example, Smart Stake Analytics will show you some of the things like the bonded tokens of, for example, Maneki Neko, the first, uh, uh, the, the highest valid uh, validator out there on the Fetch network with 43.8 million tokens. Um, they have a voting power of 13.8 percent of the network commission five percent the unique delegates to their to them the 467 so this is another metric you might want to consider maybe i want to validate it was a lot of different people delegating to them so that's something you can look at voting power change uh 200 so these are some of the metrics that they're adding there in case you're really savvy you have maybe a bunch of tokens out there and you want to make sure that you're giving your tokens another thing i want to mention you want to distribute your tokens just like any investment you want to distribute your risk so that you you know just bound to one to one to one risk factor you want to you want to distribute your tokens that in case something happens to one validator temporarily you don't get slashed off all your tokens so carrying signs other metrics you can look at that the like the net apr or annual percentage return uh, also on your percentage versus the annual percentage yield you may want to look at this now other things i want to look at when you're using the kepler wallet which is the most popular wallet in the cosmos ecosystem when you click stake it will lead you to their own dashboard where you can overview different networks you can choose a network you want to overview you can choose staking active proposals but unfortunately these guys don't list fetch which is actually okay you can look at these different proposals and vote onto them using platforms like omniflix now, when you click Omniflix, it might be confusing at first about where to go, what to find, but you can just click right over here and then it will lead you to their to their homepage, which lists all the particular network. Pick and choose whatever you're interested in. For example, we're talking about Fetch right now. You can choose Fetch, click Stake, and then it will lead you to their dashboard where it will lead you to, to basically the, the whole Fetch thing. You can view the validators on the Fetch network. You can see their status, their voting power, their commission, how much they're taking, the tokens stake to them, the tokens they've staked. And you can also click, then click on the proposal because it's now under the Fetch network. That's what you're looking at. And you can look at the different proposals. Now, if you connect your wallet to them, you can now vote on these proposals if they're still out there, if they're, sti if they're still within the period of voting. You can vote onto these proposals using a platform like Omniflex. So that's one thing I wanted to put out there because it could get confusing, especially if you're new to this space. Omniflex is a, it's a, it's a good space to navigate all this stuff. Now, if you're using the actual Fetch wallet and you know, if you're using Kepler and you click on the stake, it won't lead you to the Kepler dashboard, but it will lead you to Restake. Now, there's something I wanted to mention about Restake. Restake is a platform where if you're not, if your Fetch tokens are not um, backed by a Ledger Nano, they can automatically do that compounding for them. So whatever Fetch tokens you get, some validators have implemented this on uh, on the platform itself because the platform has enabled the validators to enable that feature of you know recompounding automatically for you so if the validator has also enabled that feature that these guys provide you can do that so it's an amazing platform because it allows you to do that but then one other amazing thing i wanted to mention this is for delegators as well 
is that if you're an inactive delegator, you can see a bunch of them, they've been jailed. Guys, don't judge by this. Maybe they're new. Maybe they're trying to figure out how to unjail themselves. They faced a particular error. As I say, these are nascent stages and a lot of teams are trying to learn. But if they're bad players, then you should know that they're bad players, right? But some others, maybe they're starting out. For example, you can see this guy with just one fit. But then I think I saw someone with... Uh, 53,000 fit maybe they've already unjailed themselves i'm not too sure but hey uh, for example this one has 10,000 fit and they're jailed so you have to figure out why why they're jailed maybe they have a website maybe there's a there's a platform where they communicate and and if they're jailed and they're still planning to come back on then i think they should refund some of the delegated some of the tokens that have been slashed that would be good behavior but the point that i wanted to mention is that if you're a new validator and you haven't yet crossed onto maybe you don't have enough tokens to qualify you onto into the top 70 validators but you have your own tokens in another wallet you can actually delegate to yourself if you've not used the command line interface that you can find in the documents page you can use this restake platform to actually go to view stake and you can delegate to an inactive validator of course you don't want to dele delegate to a jailed validator unless it's yourself or if they've communicated they're going to get they communicated they're going to get back online and you want to support them i don't know whatever you're looking at whatever your situation might be i found this quite interesting you can actually delegate to, for example, an inactive validator. It's a better example to use. Maybe they're inactive because they've just spun up their node. So you can actually redelegate to them or redelegate to yourself if you're the inactive validator and you have your tokens in another wallet. So that's more of a communication to the, um, to the people that are spinning up these nodes and maybe their tokens are in another wallet. Now, if you're using the actual Fetch web wallet because they have their own and you click on the staking on the stake tab, it will lead you to this dashboard, which is created by the Fetch team itself. I, the, yeah, it's the Fetch team itself. And it will straight away throw you to this list of, you know, this hierarchical arrangement of the top, you know, the validator with the highest voting power all the way to the validator with the lowest voting power. And you can see all of them. So this is a list. And if you connect your wallet, a plus will appear here, which will allow you to delegate tokens to them. Or if you then go deeper into the platform, you can redelegate the tokens to another validator. Now, as the last thing to note, if you're a validator, there's an amazing article that I found, which is Cosmos Monitoring and Alerting for Validators. Now, this article is amazing because it will teach you about certain platforms like, I think it's uh, this Prometheus and these others like, let's look through here, I think Grafanda, is that the name? There's Prometheus, there's Grafana as well. So these are dash, these are platforms that have been created by other teams out there. You can set up a profile and you can, depending on the metrics that you want to look at, it can show you a good dashboard of your own node. If you have a bunch of data, if you're a business doing other things, these platforms allow you to set up charts that uh, you know allow you to create these alerts about your data and what's happening with your data. So some of the validators have actually implemented their infrastructure within these they've created their profiles using this infrastructure which allows other delegators to actually see the situation of their nodes maybe you're missing a lot of blocks and you try to go back and check what what is happening with your with your infrastructure and you want to troubleshoot and make sure you fix that so these are good platforms out there you want to read through this documentation they show you others like maybe Hubble by figment networks um i guess botalicious by Safa core endpoints of endpoints of a custom solution and you can read about all these things now what's amazing is that there's some links in here that will lead you to some people that actually wrote specific articles about how to set this up in case you're confused on the command line interface so another hand holding now you find all this stuff in here it's a it's quite a short article but you will get a lot of information from this especially if you're a delegator or if you're savvy valid if you're a, a validator or if you're a savvy delegator that wants to really navigate and see what your delegator what your validator knows what the validators are up to the ones you've delegated to what they're up to are they missing blocks are they active so these tools are not only helpful for the validators but they're also extremely helpful for the delegators. So Grafana, for example, looks like this. You can set up a profile and some of the charts or graphs that they set you up for look like this. 
and also Prometheus, from Prometheus looks like this. So guys, this is a brief, of course, this is a, this is a brief analysis of this of this validator, delegator, proof of stake space. And you understand also networks like Ethereum have implemented this uh, proof of stake ecosystem um, um, idea. So they, there's different ways of delegating to them. I think you need a minimum of 32 Ethereum. But on the Cosmos side, this, these tools here will help you navigate the Cosmos side extremely well. And of course, if you use them, you will go on discovering other things because these networks just like omniflix will show you a bunch of other things a bunch of other networks and as you navigate this space you keep picking up and learning other things especially if you keep reading so guys i hope you learned something and i'll see you on the next one take care bye bye